Hi, this is Rachel with Good Behavior Beginnings, and I wanted to go over a quick forced choice preference assessment that can be helpful when determining what your learner um, might want to work for in the moment. So I'm going to model this initially as if I'm working with an early learner who may not have a lot of vocabulary. Um, and then I'll talk about what it might look like for a learner who has a lot more communication skills. So the first thing is that you want to find probably like four items that you can use. And we're basically going to set this up kind of like a final four bracket in basketball. So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to have your items, you're going to have them close. So probably in your lap or right next to you, you're going to hold up two items and you're going to give the instruction, pick one. You don't label the items at this point, especially for a learner who might have echolalia, where they're just going to repeat the last thing you say. And instead, what you're looking for is for that learner to point, to reach, potentially, if they're not able to do that, to push away the one that they don't want. Or if they do have words, then they might spontaneously use their words to label items. But at minimum, they should provide some sort of indication as to what they want or what they don't want. So you hold up two items, pick one. The learner reaches for one. You present it, oh, Play-Doh, you want the Play-Doh. So then you can label it. You let them play with it for a couple of seconds. You put the other one that they didn't choose, probably like behind your chair or under the table. You don't need that one anymore. They don't, they didn't choose it. They're probably not going to choose it again. It's probably at the bottom. They've played with this. Now you say my turn and you take it back. Um, if your learner doesn't know my turn, <laughs> that's okay. You can just prompt it. So you say my turn and then you prompt them to put it in your hand. Um, although if that is a challenge for the learner, you probably just want to start with like a free operant uh, preference assessment, assessment, let them go for what they want, and then practice my turn and giving it back that way. So you say my turn, you take it back. Now you keep this one handy. So I'm going to put this one in my lap as I pick up the other two items that I have to offer. So I'm going to hold those up. Pick one. They reach. Oh, microphone. You pick the microphone. So I'm going to give them the microphone. They get to play with that for a few seconds. I'm going to put the one that they didn't choose again behind my chair. I don't need it. They didn't choose it. It's probably not a preferred item at this moment. I say my turn. I get the item back. Now I'm going to present what they chose from the first time and what they chose from the second time together at the same time. Again, I'm not going to label them. I'm just going to offer it. Pick one and let them reach for what they want microphone you pick the microphone now i'm probably going to keep this one closer so i might set it next to my chair but not behind my chair so that i could offer it as a choice in the future after they've earned the microphone a few times so they might want to mix it up right because this was preferred over the other items right so i might keep this one close um, but this is the one that is most preferred at the moment, and now they have selected it. That last time, instead of giving it to them, that would be when I would run my trial. So I would do the last one, pick one, microphone, you chose the microphone, touch nose, or say butterfly, or clap your hands, or whatever our skill is, right? Whatever it is we're working for. Or if we're using a token board, I say, great, we're working for microphone. And I set it, and we pull up the token board, and we start running our trials. And then when they get the tokens, they get this item. So I'm going to do all of that again, smoothly through. All right. Pick one, Play-Doh, you chose the Play-Doh. My turn. Pick one, Microphone, you chose the Microphone. My turn. Pick one, Play-Doh, we're gonna work for Play-Doh. Clap your hands, good work, here's the Play-Doh, let's play. 
And that's an example of how you can do a quick force choice preference assessment. And you could repeat that um, almost after every try, uh, every time that they earn the reinforcer, right? So after every um, time that they've earned the Play-Doh in this case, then I might pick up the microphone and the Play-Doh and see if they want to switch it up. And after a few times of that, maybe five, six, ten, you know, kind of judging based upon how engaged the learner is with the Play-Doh at that point, I might go back and I might grab four different items and do that again. So it's really quick. It doesn't take very long and it can give you a really clear picture of what they want. Now, that works really well for learners that might just reach or point or even just push away something that they don't want. So it's a really good starting place for a learner that may not be able to demonstrate a whole lot of other communication skills. Um, for learners that do have more communication skills, you could present pictures of those items or activities and let them choose. You could potentially list some items. Hey, do you want to play on the swings or go to the trampoline after we earn? You want to make sure that if you are using a lot more language, the learner is able to understand and accurately answer those questions if you're asking. Um, you don't want to do a lot of verbal labeling with a learner who engages in echoic behaviors where they're just repeating back what you say because they may repeat the last thing that you said, but that may not be what they want. Um, and that's why presenting items and letting them reach for what they want is helpful um, to clarify whether or not they really want something. So regardless of what they say, what does their behavior suggest for a learner who has communication challenges? Um, as learners get older, as they develop more of those communication skills, you might not need to do this. You might be moved to token systems. You might just be able to ask, hey, what do you want to work for on your break? And that's perfectly fine. I just really like this one as a quick, easy way to assess preference for a learner who may have limited communication skills. What kind of preference assessments do you do or what questions do you have about this preference assessment? Let me know. Thanks.